How's it going, you guys? AZPlayout21 back again with episode number 14 of this UFC save on WMMA5. And here we are, UFC 272, Wu versus Berto. I've talked about it at length in the previous videos, but we've got three title fights here and this pay-per-view. Three title fights for you on this card and a very very big preliminary card to show for you as well glad you've uh, been able to join me once again for another video here on this save my brainchild my baby let's go ahead and check out the emails as uh looks like Co carolina kowalkovitz is injured a little bit of a minor injury she has a fight scheduled it looks like she's still going to be able to fight we need to re renew curtis melender curtis melender two and three in the ufc coming off of a loss. I'm a big fan of his in real life. It says he's from San Bernardino, but he's actually from Anaheim, California. Big fan of Curtis Melender. Let's go ahead and give him a, another contract. $900 a fight. That's criminal. Nonetheless, we'll give that to him. Yassine Corbett also needs to be re-signed. 6-2-1. No contest. Uh, did he fail a drug test? He did. I'm still going to sign him. He can always uh, right his wrong for that. All right, so we're going to do that, and then we're going to put Yassin on the list here to be sent back down. All right, Curtis Melender, Curtis Melender extends deals. Blast Lurberti has signed, signed. All right, Louis Long signs. Remember, we got this guy also that just signed. He's the guy that was 5-0. and He was the lightweight champion of ROC, but now he's going to be in the UFC now. At just 5-0, and but some pretty good experience under his belt. We'll see how he does. Just some guys re-signing. Tony Martin needs to be renewed. Let's see how he's doing. Coming off a loss. Coming off two straight losses, but he hasn't been doing super terribly. Give him a couple more fights. Tony Martin, good to go. Alrighty. So he is renewed. Let's see, anybody else? Frank Mir has retired. Wow, that comes out of basically nowhere. His la He's on a four-fight losing streak, so I don't really blame him all that much. Yeah, four fights in a, in a row that he lost. 43 years of age. Let me see if I can talk him out of it. No, and he's not going to be able to. So Frank Mir, at 42 years of age, has retired from MMA. Very sad indeed. Nonetheless, Frank Mir is done. And, uh, well, goodbye to Frank Mir. Uh, Usman's brother signs. We have to send him down. Hussein, Luca, and Caden. So let's go ahead and send all of these uh, guys down to ROC. We got Demas, who still has a fight. We've got Caden shut. Sending you down to ROC. Alright, we got Hussein. Send you down to ROC as well. Lewis Long, 19 and 5. Regional champion in the UK. Send him down to ROC. Can't loan him out as uh, his contract hasn't begun just, uh, just yet. Is that because he has a fight scheduled? He does in June, so just a month from now. All right, Tosone. Nope, not yet. Luca, nope. Luca, there we go. 15 and 2 is Luca, also from the UK scene. All right, Islam. Nope, not that Islam. Let's see here, Alden. Alden has not been signed yet. Tim, Tim Elliott, Tim Means, Tim Smalls. All right, sending you down to ROC as well. All right, Kenneth, no Kenneth yet, no Kenneth yet, Muhammad, Muhammad Usman, back down to auto, see you go, all right, Blast Laliberte, back down to auto, see, seven and two, good start to your career, Mariush, no, all right, so let's see here, So I think Baron Gar was on there. Yes, he was. 7-2. and two. His entire career in ROC. 
couple more fights left to go. Augusto, is he on there? And he is not. All right, so that's all the people that we need to send down for now. So let's go ahead and take a look at the fight card. And go ahead and pause and see if, if you want. That's the main card. I've gone over it before and the prelims as we are ready to go for fight night. UFC 272 Wu versus Berto. And one more thing I just want to make sure of. Let's go ahead and put this on pay-per-view. Alright. So we got it on that one. Let's put it on Direct TV as well. You want to make sure that uh, you're putting it on pay-per-view. Otherwise you're not going to make any money off of it. And <clears throat> That's uh, the name of the game here. Is the big money that comes with these pay-per-views. I don't think this one will draw a whole bunch just because it's uh, three title fights but it's you know not necessarily uh, any any one big. Alright so put it on pay-per-view so we'll make some lucrative money off of that now after putting it on all the pay-per-view providers as we are good to go. UFC 272 couple of other things going on today including an M1 show and then an Invicta show as well. Take a look at that one. Emily Whitmire, former UFC fighter, in the main event of that one. Rachel Ostovich, who we just saw fight against Paige Van Zant, also in this one. Uh, hasn't. Well, she's been doing okay for herself in Invicta. Not too bad. All right. So on to the pay per view we go UFC 272, Wu versus Berto. And here we go with the prelims. Of course, Yan on Wu fighting literally in a couple of minutes um, on the UFC Shenzhen show. As the first fight is between Moicano and Douglas Silva de Andrade. So Moicano, of course, in real life, recently fighting with Jose Aldo and losing. And uh, here, though, hasn't had the, uh, the greatest of times. Has lost his last fight to Temurov, beat Clay Guida. I'm going to take him to beat Silva Diondraj as he beats him quite quickly, TKO in round one. So a good start there from Moicano, and hopefully he can pick things back up. Next is Leon Edwards, who has been craving a fight with Jorge Masvidal. Not sure if he's going to get it, but uh, Leon had a great showing of his own in his last fight. I can't remember exactly who it was at this very moment. I know it was someone big. It might have been either Edson Barbosa or Rafael Dos Anjos. Let me take a quick look at that. Leon Edwards. Leon Edwards, what was your last fight? Your last fight was against Rafael Dos Anjos. It was a unanimous decision. That's right. So good for you. As we get this one underway, let's see what you've been up to in this save. And he is on a three-fight losing streak. One of those being against GSP, Roberto Soldich, Warley Alves. Not having a good time as of late. Taking on the 37-year-old Leonardo Santos. And Rocky gets it done. TKO in round number three. All right. Moving along now. Matt Brown taking on Gunner Gunny Nelson. Of course, Gunny having a good time in the real life of the UFC as well, but here he's on quite a losing streak. He was number two in the world for a while. He had a title fight against Vicente Luque, but then lost to Daichi Abe after he lost the title fight, lost to Justin Ayari immediately after that. He now finds himself at number 13, taking on Matt Brown, looking to get some momentum back. The 40-year-old is having a, uh, an okay time, recently le losing to Maxim Butorin, beating Nick Diaz in his last win. So I'm going to take Gunnar Nelson in this one. This is probably more of a tune-up fight just for him to get another win under his belt as Matt Brown actually knocks him out. Oh, my God. So Gunnar Nelson taking quite a nosedive here, going from number 13, and he will might drop into the bottom 20. That sucks for him. Nonetheless, we move right on along. Yusuf Rysoff taking on Jeremy Kennedy. Kennedy 17 and 3, number 22 featherweight in the UFC, coming off a win over Corey Sanhagen, which is a very good win to have, especially considering how good Corey Sanhagen is in the bantamweight division in real life. 
and Rice off the number 16 featherweight in the world, 7-1 and one in the UFC, only losing to Dalgiev. And this is actually a rematch between the two. And the winner of that fight last time was actually Jeremy Kennedy. So I'm going to take him in this one again. He's the odds-on underdog, actually, as... Yep, Kennedy takes the second one as well via unanimous decision. So he might move up a little bit. Rice off will, of course, just dip down in the rankings. As now, we have a, a recent title fight uh, haver, <laughs> title contender, Brian Ortega, taking on Abdurrahman Temurov. Temurov is having a good go here in the UFC. 3-0, and the number 11 featherweight in the world, beating uh, Moicano, Bandanai, and Ricardo Lamas, and is undefeated for quite a while. All the fights that he's had in the safe, he is undefeated. That's very impressive. Brian Ortega having less, less success. Lost three out of his last six fights. Yair Rodriguez, Cole Miller, and Patty Pimblitz, the people that have beaten him. So moving along, I think I'm going to take... Temeroff in this one just simply because of how dominant he seemed to been you know in this game save I think he's going to come out on top and he does via TKO in round one that's crazy good for him and he wants to fight Zabit that'd be quite a interesting fight to be honest both those Russians going at it next up is going to be Frankie Sines taking on Manny Bermudez this looks to be pretty easy for Bermudez three and one in the UFC last beating Terry on Ware Frankie signs. He's coming off a loss to Demarte Pena. So we'll see what goes on in this one. As it's actually going to be, again, Manny Bermudez getting it done via submission in round three. The minus 780 favorite getting it done here. Richard Filthy Walsh, nice nickname, taking on RDA. Rafael Dos Anjos, huge favorite is RDA. Although he is on five straight losses, the most recent one to Sean Strickland. So never count out his opponent in this game, apparently, as uh, Richard Walsh is uh, on quite a winning streak, actually. Last beating Ben Askren, he's on a 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 fight winning streak. So nothing to be, nothing to scoff at, Richard Walsh. Eight fight winning streak. He's been a champion in that deep promotion last beating Ben Askren. You know what? I think if I was a betting man, I might put money on on Richard Walsh, and that would have been the smart thing to do because he knocks out RDA in round number three. So that's probably going to move him into the rankings, although RDA was never even in the rankings to begin with. RDA going on a complete nosedive here in his career as Walsh is happy to get the victory. Melvin Gillard, 39 years of age, big-time veteran in the UFC, taking on Paweł Zelazowski, number 18 middleweight in the UFC, 1-1, one one, last losing to Hector Lombard. Melvin Gillard, odds-on underdog, last losing to Ed Ruth in his uh, last fight. I'm going to go ahead and take the, the young man Zelazowski as he gets it done via armbar in round number one. So moving up in the rankings is Zelazowski. As we move on to Ankalaev taking on Alexander Rakic. I'm going to go ahead and take Rakic in this one because I have seen him fight in real life in the light heavyweight division. Nice little prospect the UFC has. 13-5 and five in this game. Ankalaev is uh, coming off two straight wins over some pretty shitty light heavyweight opponents, if I'm being honest. So I'm going to go ahead and take Rakic. And Rakic does win via knockout in round one. Very good for him. The Austrian getting it done and improving to 14-5. and five. And now the main event for the prelims. It's going to be Zumana Cisse taking on Nikita Krylov. Krylov, the number 15 heavyweight in the UFC. Number 6 light heavyweight, apparently, as he can fight in both. 7-5 and five in the UFC. Last coming off a win to Junior Baby Albini. Before that, had two straight losses. But before that, was on an absolute tear in KSW. And he goes up against Zumana Cisse, the number 10 heavyweight in the world, coming off a loss to Arjan Bular. But before that, had a four-fight winning streak that included Curtis Blades and Alexander Volkov. So I think I'm going to take Cisse in this one. He's a little shorter than Krylov. Very thick boy. 
but Cisse gets it done via submission in round three. So he'll probably face off against a top 10 opponent next, Cisse, as we now move into the pay-per-view, into the main card. This is what everyone is paying $60 for, and the opener is Marif Piranha Piraev taking on a Mark Bone Crusher Jakeshi. 5'10", a little bit taller is Jakeshi. Even fight is this one. The number 16 lightweight in the UFC, Jakeshi, coming off two straight losses to Kevin Lee and Stephen Ray. And Marifa Parayev, number 21 ranked lightweight, losing last to Sage Northcutt. I'm going to go ahead and take Parayev in this one as we go ahead and let this one play out. And if anything interesting happens, I will be right here. as we get things going. Going over the referee and what's not. The round one begins our first pay-per-view action here as Shikeshi looks to get things started here with a jab. Coming here to strike. Of course Sambo, Pariah's main weapon, but he does have boxing. Boxing and wrestling probably seems to be the two most important things you would want to have. Pariah getting some cage control. Halfway through the first round, nothing really doing. Of course, three three rounds, these fights. Some big elbows. And it looks like Jakeshi might have taken round one. Pariah needing to come back here. He had a couple. He had some control earlier on in the round. Nonetheless, Jakeshi in the lead. Nothing really too big has happened. No submission attempts. No takedowns really either. Seemingly, it's been all on the feet here. Jakeshi showing some good head movement. Right hook from Jakeshi as we enter the last part of round number two. It's looking like this might go to a decision. Nothing really urgent coming from either of these fighters. Maybe more, you know, more scared of, of losing than they are wanting to win in this kind of situation as we exit round number two. Oh, and there we go. Pariah, who was down by two rounds, came into the third round needing something, and he immediately got it. 49 seconds into round three, and Marif Pariah moves up in the rankings by beating Mark Jakeshi. So number 21, lost to Sage Northcutt, but will surely be in the top 20 now, as Jakeshi will be going down. Now he's on a three-fight losing streak, so that kind of sucks for him. Nonetheless, he'll have to pick it right back up as oh wait hold on oh my god I'm completely stupid Jakeshi won by knockout whoops alright so turn that around Jakeshi writes the wrong of having a two fight losing streak and he gets another win that he desperately needed alright moving on to our second fight and look who's here John Bones Jones so John Jones was suspended for three years in this game save before he, I was able to use him. I wasn't able to schedule a fight with him until 2021, and, which I did at UFC 265. He lost to Ion Kutalaba via knockout. So always give, a, always give them a puncher's chance. John Jones, now 34, still fairly young, really, as he takes on Eric, your boy Anders, who's on a four-fight winning streak, last beating Shogun Hua. I'm going to take John Jones in this. I'm a big John Jones fan. I think that loss that he had to uh I think that loss that he had was kind of a fluke, so we'll just go ahead and see what happens here. Just think about that though. If John Jones like literally didn't fight for 3 years 
and then came back and lost. Like, imagine everyone would love that because everyone's kind of just at this point waiting for John Jones to lose or get knocked out or something, but it's just not happened yet. It didn't happen during the Santos fight, even though people really thought that, you know, Santos had a chance to knock him out. If Santos hadn't torn his ACL and MCL at the same time, he probably would have had a better chance at beating John Jones. It was a split decision, so obviously it was a great fight. back into it here. John Jones still in the first round. Of course, a three-round fight. Nothing we've been used to seeing from John Jones. You know, I'd imagine he's used to the five-round fight, so he probably has a lot of uh, energy to expend here because, you know, his cardio has to be incredible, incredible as uh, John Jones seems to have won that round. Apparently, it's been a really good fight so far. Eric Yeboy Anders from Alabama. John Jones, of course, fighting out of uh, Jackson Wink in New Mexico. Cleanly with the right hand, Jones starting to slow down, apparently, as they're both coming together f to strike. Attacks with a clean right hand. Jones counters a right hand with a jab, using his reach to his advantage. And Jones, of course, is a decision fighter. Um, he did get the uh, TKO against Gustafson, but his last two wins, of course, via decision. Oh, Anders is knocked down, and just as I say this, eating powerful shot, and there it is, TKO, John Jones. So John Jones gets his first win back in the UFC after three years away, and he gets it against Eric, your boy, Anders. So he'll move to 23-2-1, and, and who knows where he'll be in the rankings. Eric Anders will have to take that shot as now we have our first title fight of the pay-per-view as it's Montana De La Rosa defending the UFC flyweight championship against Miskela Batautis. So she started out beating Nico Montano for the title but she got popped for PEDs so she had her vacated. She got a win over Christina Marks a year later then defeated Mackenzie Dern for the title yet again. So she's been the champion on three occasions here. She then lost the title to Jillian Robertson, got a couple wins in succession before defeating Jillian Robertson for that same title and then defending it against Ariane Lipsky. So De La Rosa all over the place here in this flyweight division as she takes on Miskela Batautis. Just 10-1, and 3-0 and in the UFC. She fought her way through Invicta and was able to get into the UFC. Had three straight wins, her last one over Mackenzie Dern, and she now finds herself here fighting for the title against Montana De La Rosa. I think just the experience, though, is going to be a little bit too much for Batautis. Early in her career, she still has a long way to go as a 1-2 fails, and getting her in the clinch and immediately going for the trip, Batautis able to stuff that attempt. A big wrestler is Montana De La Rosa, as a takedown here from De La Rosa. Batautis reaches up and tries to grab an arm, looking for a submission off the back. And a submission, and immediately, <laughs> two minutes into the first round, Montana De La Rosa defeats Miskela Batautis via submission to defend the flyweight championship. So, like I said, the experience just a little bit too much, and the flyweight title stays with De La Rosa. All right, the co-main event time now is the second of three title fights as it's now for the UFC Women's Strawweight Championship. And it's Janessa, Evil Princess Mirandin, defending her title. Taking a look at her, she's been undefeated in this entire save. And when she reached the UFC, she beat Bastara Kikash, Cynthia Calvillo, Sharon Jacobson, Jessica Aguilar, Joanna Janjacek, Nadia Kassem, and then Claudia Gadella via TKO in the first round to win the title and she faces off against former title contender Livia Renata Sousa coming off four straight wins including Joanna Jajacek, Courtney Casey, Kowalkovich and Estela Nunes. So I think I'm going to take I think I'm going to take Miranda and I think she's just that little bit better and uh, has been dominant in this entire save so I think that she'll be okay getting things ready here of course thank you once again for watching this this is UFC 272 one more title fight after this one pulling guard 
Brandon fights the attempt off. Just smothering her. Trying to get off of her is Mirandon. Sosa tries to lock on. Oh! And immediately, we have a submission. Another one, two minutes into round number one. And Livia Renata Sousa, via armbar, has submitted Janessa Mirandon to not only give her her first loss in this save, but take away the UFC Flyweight Championship. She'll now move to 17-3, and three, and she is now the champion after a failed attempt at doing so against Gadella earlier on in the save. Exactly three years earlier in this save, actually. So now she's the champion, and now we're going to see who she faces off against next. That's going to be very interesting to see, as we're now in the main event of the evening. Yanan Wu, who, like I said, is literally fighting a couple hours from now. 10-2 and two in the UFC, the UFC bantamweight champion, beating Amanda Nunes for the crown. Also beat Raquel Pennington, Ronda Rousey, Betch Kohea, Misha Tate, Lee Malay McFarlane, Valentina Shevchenko. The names are unbelievable that she's been able to dispatch. Just incredible. And she faces off against a very game opponent in Revelina Nana Berto. Very popular fighter, 7-1 and one in the UFC. She was an Invicta for a little bit, beat GDR, lost to Sarah Kaufman for the title previously, then went on a tear, a five-fight winning streak, to earn this title attempt. And of course, this is for the featherweight championship, the interim featherweight championship. And let's see how it goes. Yanan Wu trying to get a second title after her Bantamweight championship. She would be technically a two-weight class champion should she be able to do this. Trying to go for some exchange here. Nothing landing. This might go to a decision. N now that I'm realizing this, Berto does not have a team. No fight camp or anything. wonder if that's going to be able to do burb wobbles and falls. Wu attacking her. Pounding away, going for a submission attempt. Looks like Wu was in firm control here. Berto able to defend. Still going for submissions here. And it looks like the round one is going to end. So Wu going for a submission in round one. Unable to get it though. They're engaging in the center of the octagon. You want to see a little bit something extra from Berto. She's a jiu-jitsu practitioner, but she nearly got submitted herself in that last round. Coming forward on the attack. Some big, big opportunities here for Yanan Wu to become a double champion. Not much going on. Beautiful right uppercut. Berto is knocked down. Pounding away, looking to finish her off. And it looks like she does it. Yanan Wu wins by TKO and becomes the interim featherweight champion. So that first round, she was going for the submission. Second round, kind of lulled her to sleep. And it was this. Can't connect with a jab, but then she hits her with a beautiful right uppercut. Berto, of course, gets knocked down, finishes her off with some strikes, and then the referee has to stop it. 4.05 in round number two it was a great fight. Unbelievable. And Yanan Wu is a two-division champion. That's incredible. Holding the interim featherweight belt aloft, she celebrates being the new champion and says she's going to go on and unify the titles. And the actual featherweight champion is Amanda Nunes. So that's who they would <laughs> that's who that's who she's gonna have to fight to unify that title. Popularity decreases a little bit, but increases in some other places. That's not too terrible. We'll be able to get that back. All right. So a good pay-per-view overall. We'll go ahead and update the rankings. And I actually kind of want to show you guys what happens on the Monday of the first week of the month because that's when you get most of the regen fighters. And that's when you're able to find some really, really good regens and maybe some guys that we can sign.
But yeah, so UFC 272 is in the books. I'll go ahead and go over the emails and the rankings and everything with you guys before signing off and moving on to the next episode. I'm hoping to churn out a lot of these episodes and I don't want to I don't want to upload them all, you know, at one point. Wouldn't want to confuse all you guys by giving you guys too many too many videos to watch, but uh, I'll probably, you know, record a bunch of them and then release them periodically. Hopefully give you guys something to uh to binge watch a little bit. All right, finishing up here. Literally three hours from now is when the uh, UFC fight night starts, and I'm uh, pretty, pretty, pretty excited for it. So we'll see exactly what happens here. Alright, so we are ready to go here. It's Sunday, week 4, May 2022. You can see there, as I look through here, for some people with negotiations, 5-0, and 3-0, and Bantamweight Division. Might give him a call, you know. Alright, four fights, offer you him that. Alright, Yoshifumi. Hopefully we can get you into ROC. Yoshi Fumi, always looking for prospects, just like Dana White is. Right, so negotiations 13 and 14. No, thank you. Alexis Davis, okay, that's fine. On the markets, 20 and 8, no, that's fine. Cody East, that's okay. 2 and 6, no, thank you. All right, take a look at the emails. We've got uh, Renu Zelazowski, who just came off of that win over Melvin Gillard. Have another four-fight contract, Mr. Zelazowski. Bruna Vargas needs to be renewed. She went 0-2 in the UFC. Now she's losing an Invicta. So I think I'm just going to say goodbye to Bruna Vargas, unfortunately. Hopefully she can get some wins on the regional circuits. Maybe get... Get herself back in here. Darcel Gervin needs to be renewed. Losing to Danielle Taylor has been kind of off and on in Invicta. Not a big fan of the record. So I'm going to go ahead and release her as well. 6-6. Six and six. If you can get that up to like 10-6 and six or something, I'll bring you back in. Strawweight 3-0. and oh. She's won all of her fights in Invicta. Big fan of that. So let's go ahead and get her another four fights in here. Bryn Norwick. Alright, so Bryn will be back in here. Jolene Bradshaw needs to be brought back in. Two and five. Won her last fight though. Hmm. I think I am going to let her... I think I'm going to give her another couple fights. Two fights to be exact. Two and five is not a great record, but we need featherweights, so go ahead and sign her back up. Jolene. All right. Mariusz has resigned. We need to renew Temerov, who's also coming off a big win over Brian Ortega. We'll give him another five fights. Alright, all good to go with that. 
Let's see. Livia Renata Sousa, our new champion, needs to also be re-signed. So let's go ahead and take care of that as well. All right, another five-fight deal for you, and you are good. All right, Deandrage needs to be re-signed. Seven and seven in the UFC, two-fight losing streak. Mm, I'll go ahead and give him another two fights, not three, two. Another little chance to redeem yourself here. Brian Ortega needs to be re-signed. Coming off a loss, but I like Brian Ortega. Let's go ahead and give him another five fights. Jeremy Kennedy, who just defeated Rice off yet again. You'll get another four fights. Just not realizing he's from Canada. Rosalia Pezella needs to be renewed. Eight and four beat Emily Whitmire in the main event of that last Invicta show. Uh, not the biggest fan of her record. She still needs to prove herself. Another five fights in Invicta ought to do that. All right, so Rosalia. All right, she'll be sent down to Invicta when the time comes. Mark Chikeshi. Go ahead and re-sign him. Beat Marif Parayev, of course. He'll be climbing up in the rankings for sure. All righty. Batautis. Losing that title fight, very unfortunate for her. We'll go ahead and give her some more fights here in the UFC. Try to get her back into the thick of things. Yanan Wu, our interim featherweights and a bantamweight champion, as you can see here. Just absolutely incredible. Go ahead and give her a new contract as well. Six fights at 49.9k a fight. Melvin Gallard. Not sure if I want to keep him around. Two losses. Three. Yeah, I'll keep him. Like I said, never hurts to have some veterans around. Three fights left to go. We'll keep you in, Melvin. Zumana Cisse, our new top 10 heavyweight. After beating Nikita Krylov, we'll give him six fights. Alrighty. Um, this guy's left M1. Are you meant to come here? 15 and 0, welterweight, very nice. Leonardo Santos, 10, 5 and 1 in the UFC. Not having the greatest of times, but was doing pretty well initially. And go ahead and give you another two fights. At 30,000 though, that's kind of expensive for someone as shitty as you are doing. Nonetheless, he's high level national in South America, so he's clearly worth something as we need to we need to re up our pay-per-view deals let's go ahead and take care of that right now revenue tie pay-per-view all right Application made. Application made. Application made. All right, I think we are good to go here. So let's go ahead and go back to the main screen. And now let's go ahead, we'll skip forward to tomorrow, update the rankings, take a look and see if there's any prospects I want to sign up, and then we're good to go.
All right, here we are, Monday, week one in June of 2022. And let's see. All right, it's funny. ROC want Mark Jakeshi. Well, you can't have him because he's uh, he's in the UFC, so that's not happening. Sorry. All right, so let's go ahead and take a look at all these major stories. It's basically just going to be everyone trying to sign all of my people that are off of their contracts. So negotiations, 8-2, and 4-0 oh in the AFC. Welterweight, he's their champion. Let's take a look here. Four wins. And I'll go ahead and sign him up. He's from Australia. Ty Duncan. Go ahead and bring him in. Alrighty, Ty. Take a look, see. Oh, here we go. Jefferson Zondo. That looks like Apollo Cruz. <laughs> Heavyweight from Nigeria. A world caliber competitor. That sounds right up my alley. Let's get this guy in. Four fights. Sending him to ROC. Jefferson is ready to go. All right, Braden Molyneux. Irish light heavyweight, world caliber competitor in kickboxing. He looks to be pretty good. 29 years of age, no matter. We'll send him down to ROC as well. Braden. All right, seven and five. Abram Naylor. Deidrean Perrins is coming. The 24 year old South African fighter wrestling background world championship level competitor in the middleweight division let's go ahead and get him in as well Deidrean Prinz alright Deidrean is going to be signed up uh, let's see here ready for Judge Weidman that's a pretty dope name 25 year old bantamweights let's go ahead and get him in as well Judge Weidman Chris Weidman's Kenyan brother. All right. One more. I'll sign one more man. And it looks like it's going to be this band and weights boxing. All right. Now let's see if we can find any women now. Ermene Gildo. Ermene Gildo is his name. Alrighty, so let's see if we can find any women. Alright, there we go, Larey Katza. Flyweights, and we could always use women, so we're just going to go ahead and sign her right up. Alright, Larey. Get in the van. Any more women? Mm -hmm. Nope, a lot of men that are coming in here. I need some more women. Uh, Anaya Ray, American fighter. Straw weight, yeah, 22 years old. Let's get her in too. All right. All right, and I think any anyone after Zalika and Menguni, a flyweight national championship competitor. Let's go. Yeah, let's get her in too. I typically like to do like five or six guys and maybe like four women. Zalika, that's a pretty dope name. Let's go ahead and see if we can get at least two more women. Kalaba and Lahapo. Flyweights, regional competitor. You can always use more flyweights. So yeah, after this, two more women and then we'll be good to go as far as signing the prospects goes. And then we'll take a look at the rankings. So two more women, and let's see here, Alicia Ice. That's a dope name. She's an atom weights. Hmm. Don't necessarily need atom weights, but couldn't hurt. She'll be going up against like top competition because everyone's already good and uh, seasoned. So that kind of sucks on her, on her end. Kiana Malin, 19 years of age only, flyweight little in the way of a competitive record. Let's see if there's any any other women. No. Alexandra Booz. Adam Waits. Don't need an Adam Waits. Any more? No. 
Nishadi Lechahonayane. Flyweights, no. So let's go ahead and sign up that other lady. Not this one. Right there, Kiana Melon. Malin. All right. All right, sweetie, please don't die. As we are now going to take a look at our emails and then take out the rankings and we will be done. So, Mark Jakeshi, we need to make sure that he stays with us. Your offer is currently the only one he's considering. That is good. All right. Kenneth Berg has signed. Good to hear. Batautis rival bid. Guy signed. Anyone else we need to re-sign? Approach Yanan Wu. Let's just make sure our champion is still with us. Currently the only one he sh she is considering. That's good. Betch Krahe has left Nova Union, and we are all done. All right, so that's all of our emails. And so now, let's go to rankings. Monday of week one, they've already been updated. As you can see, Zumana Cisse with that big win jumps into the top ten, number six now in the world, setting himself up pretty nicely for a nice either top five or top ten opponent. Remember, we still need to find someone for Overeem to fight. How long does he have until he's recovered? It says only 24 days, so I mean, hey, you never know. Back, uh, shouldn't have exited out of that. Light heavyweight. Not much has changed. John Jones still number three. Khalil Roundtree and Shogun Hua go up as Eric Anders goes down. And Alexander Rakic, after that win over Ankalaev, has entered the rankings. At the middleweight division, Zelazowski jumps up to number 16. And Mariusz Jakowicz, who needs to be sent down act actually, will enter the rankings. Although, should I keep him up here? He beat Logan Paul. <laughs> so not exactly a great win. I think I'm just going to send him back down. Welterweight division, Matt Brown moves up. Richard Walsh enters the rankings after beating Rafael Dos Anjos. So a nice showing by him, and now he is indeed ranked. Everyone else goes down underneath him. All right, lightweight division. Jakeshi, of course, goes up to number eight. Number eight in the world after beating Parayev. That's a big win for him, apparently. Everyone else goes down. Some of these people go up, and Gregor Gillespie is now going to be ranked. Featherweight division, Temeroff moves up to number seven. Number seven, where was he before? Number 13? Number 11, I think. But now number seven in the UFC. That's big for him. Only four fights in the UFC, and already number seven in the world. But a good list of names that he's beaten. Everyone else here goes down. Christian Lee and the company goes up as Rysoff goes down, along with Ortega and Gavin Tucker. Vanaway division, nothing changes. In the flyweight division, nothing changes. All right, Talita Noguera, number five in the featherweight division. Remember, this is the girl that was an in Invicta. Arlene Blencow now moving up. This girl was also an in Invicta. She was the featherweight champion. And you got to wonder, maybe give her Sarah Kaufman. And then the winner of that fight, oh, actually, you know what? Kaufman is already set up to fight for the featherweight title. So it looks like that's going to be the the fight to make. Either Kaufman or Blencow will be able to fight for that featherweight title pretty soon. Bantamweight division, nothing changes. Flyweight division, Batautis, of course, will go down. And McCann, Botello, and Benitez go up. And so it's looking like the winner of the Bruna Ellen and Jillian Robertson fight will be the next person to fight for the title. Of course, Jillian Robertson losing it to Montana De La Rosa. Has two wins under her belt already. So she is primed for a title chance. And in the strawweight division, Miranda going down to number six. Souza, of course, the new champion. Rose Namajunas, the number two rated fighter here. And should she win her next fight, maybe consider giving her a chance. Godella just won her last fight. Maybe the fight to make in that division is Rose Namajunas against Claudia Godella. Carla Sparza, number four, recently beating Courtney Casey and Christina Stanchu. Maybe get her involved in some way. 
Paige Van Zandt, number five, and Joanna Jacek all the way down in number ten. Adam Waite Darabi apparently number two, as uh, she is not fighting for the title. Macy Culberson is. That is not until our next pay-per-view, UFC 273. And speaking of UFC 273, let's go ahead and take a look at what's on tap for that pay-per-view. Costa versus Adesanya. All of the fights on the main card are title fights. The women's Adam weight title, featherweight title, bantam weight title, light heavyweight title, and the main event is the middleweight title, Paulo Costa versus Israel Adesanya. Take a look at the prelims. Always a stacked prelim card, and we will have that for you in a few episodes. I thank you for watching this one. This has been AZ Plow 21 signing off. You guys have a good rest of your night.